We had a huge solar storm with gorgeous aurora all over the world. And we have another mini solar storm with some fast wind from a mini corona hole that seems to be on its way. Those stories and more in the news this week. We're coming down off the high of that huge solar storm that we had just a few days ago, and the sun is still launching solar storms. Mostly from the west limb, we had this beautiful prominence eruption that took a while to finally let go, but then it's moving off to the west of us. Then on the 8th, we had this little mini solar storm launch from the Earth strike zone, and it's going to be enhanced by some fast wind from this mini coronal hole. So all of that mess might hit us somewhere late on the 12th or so. And then we've got this active region that's coming into Earth view right here on the east limb. It is showing signs of activity. Activity, but we have to wait until it gets into more of an earth-facing view to uh, see what it's going to bring us. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see we've been extremely quiet for quite some time now. We've been well below the seafloor, and despite a few B-class and C-class flares, we really don't have any uh, chances for some M-class flares right now, so you ham radio operators and GPS operators should be very, very happy. Now, we do have that east limb region that will be rotating more into Earth view in the next few days or so, and we'll get a better look. But right now, we expect that the flare risk is going to remain pretty low. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see things were pretty quiet until about late on the 6th when, bam, we got hit by that huge solar storm. And it might have actually had a little bit of wake from a solar storm that launched, that was, seemed to be Earth-directed, but probably missed us slightly to the west. Either way, it kind of enhanced the uh, fast wind that we were expecting and caused the storm to really go sky high. We had a G-class or G3-class storm. It didn't last all that long, but it gave us some amazing aurora in Europe, and it even lasted through the United States. States, so it's a good 24 hours that we had beautiful aurora. Since then, things have died back down and are pretty quiet and will probably stay that way till about the 12th. And this solar storm was so incredibly intense, it's one of the best of the year. It gave us gorgeous aurora all over the world, and I have to thank all of the photographers who sent photos in to me. I don't have time to show them all, but I appreciate everything that you do because you guys are just, you go out and you brave incredibly bad weather and stay up till all hours of the morning to get these gorgeous shots. So let me just share a few with you. Obviously we had some amazing stuff from the ISS, but the aurora was all over Scotland and Ireland, including over bright lights of the city like in Belfast. Now it was also seen in Northumberland and in Norfolk and clear down in the Netherlands. We had lots of reports there. We also had stunning aurora in Iceland. Now if we go over the pond, we have British Columbia had some gorgeous shots to share with us. We had a little bit more clouded over stuff, but uh, we had got some gorgeous show in Manitoba. And in the United States, we had Minnesota and Maine and also some in Wisconsin. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. Now, do you see that bright region that's on the backside that's kind of rotating to the far limb? That is the active region we've been watching that's now just beginning to rotate into Earth view. And it has been firing some solar storms here on the backside. So we're very interested when it rotates more into Earth view to see whether or not it might be an M-flare player. Now, you also see that big dark region. That is a coronal hole and that could provide us some fast wind back here at Earthside in about eh, 12 days or so. So you Aurora photographers, you can take a break, but get ready in about two weeks. We're going to be expecting some fast wind, which might cause us yet another solar storm. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2506 has now rotated off of the west limb. We do have a few regions that are still on the, the Earth-facing disk right now, but none of them are M-flare players. We are getting a little popping from region 2512, but we're not expecting it to be any big deal. The only big question mark we do have is this new region that is going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next few days. And we'll keep the flare risk low until we take a better look at that region and see whether or not it might be bringing us some M-class flares. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still kind of coming down from that high speed stream and that solar storm that we had just a few days ago. So NOAA is giving us about a 20 to 25 percent chance of a minor storm at high latitudes just over the next couple days as things continue to calm down. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting about a 15 percent chance for active conditions, but still things again should quiet down and stay pretty calm until around the 12th, uh, maybe even the 13th when things would get a little bit more disturbed simply because of that mini solar storm and maybe some fast wind from that little mini coronal hole. 
Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, pretty much everything is green. We do have some active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, but none of them are M-flare players, so NOAA is keeping our risk extremely low. The only question mark we do have is on the east limb with that new region rotating into view, but we don't have a good look at it yet, and it's hard to tell if we will see any M-flare activity from this one. Outside of that, uh, the only thing is that we do have a little bit of a low flux right now on the disk, so the, uh, the ham radio bands might be a little bit difficult, to, a little bit noisy, but we are expecting that that region that's rotating into Earth view from the east limb will kind of pop the flux level up just a little bit for us and help the amateur radio propagation. So the space weather seems to be calming down after that huge solar storm that we had earlier this week. So you amateur radio operators, you can get back on the bands and enjoy yourselves. And you aurora photographers can take a much needed rest and post more of those beautiful aurora photos that we've been seeing over the past couple days. Uh, until about the 12th or the 13th, things should be reasonably quiet, and it, we might start seeing a little bit of activity uh, near the end of the week because of that mini solar storm and that mini uh, coronal hole giving some fast wind. But outside of that, all eyes are on the east limb while we wait it out and see whether that new active region is going to bring us more activity. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.